This is the round of four game. This will be the round of four game. DominateDominion.com, League of Legends Dominion Tournament number 71. Whoever wins this goes on to the finals. The game name is I Wanna Slip. Because the game names are something to pay attention to. Uh, like, pro tip for people that watch uh, streams, watch where the the guy who's controlling the camera, watch where their cursor is, pay attention to things that they click on, because sometimes they will be highlighting stuff that they cannot actually afford to use voice time to acknowledge. But they will click on something so you can see their cooldowns or their items or something else like that. Or they'll circle something on the map with their cursor occasionally, and they might not be able to talk about whatever it is they're, they're pointing at. But you can see it. By watching the cursor. If I'm you watch this stream, Lulu got banned. oh, were you here for the reveal about Lulu? What reveal about Lulu? We're finding something interesting about Lulu. High Peoples said, "What is Lulu's win rate as a champion?" He wanted to know, so I started going through the screenshots. There's 800 and something of them. There's, there's almost a thousand now, actually. I'm only a quarter of the way through it, and something interesting has occurred. Lulu has a 100% win rate with is a mic. Lulu is a mic. 100% win rate. Okay. Okay. But Lulu, among everyone else, 50% I mean, win rate. 50%? Only 50. Wow. When people that aren't playing, when when, Zemikes, when people that aren't Zemike play Lulu, she has an average of 50% win rate. But if you look at just Zemike Lulu, he's never lost. But other people lose games with Lulu all the time. I think Zemike was not trolling us. Lulu's completely fine. It's just he's really good at her. Figure that out. That's that's pretty interesting. I'm not done yet. Maybe it changes when we get into like DD40 and later. But I'm in like DD like late twenties right now. So who knows what the final numbers will be? But right now it's very interesting. The chat bands that we have for this game are Wulu, Wulu, Lu Kong, Mayona, and Lao Kai. I've never heard of a single one of those champions before. Well, you know, it's, there's a lot of champions in this game. You might not know them all. There's over a hundred. 114, I think. Yep. No, 115 now. With no, Lucine. yeah, because Lucian came with out. Lucine. Yeah, so Lu Kong, Wulu, Miona, and Lao Kai are the ones that are banned. Um, you ban Lu Kong because he has an armor reduction and AoE airborne. You ban Wulu because Wulu is one of the best supports that you have. Like, has a lot of different ways to affect movement speed and has a lot of different ways to crowd control. So you have to be aware of that, as ever. Um, Miona. Long range AoE stun, extremely durable, and Laokai. Laokai provides damage reduction to his entire team, the Vengeful Maelstrom, and has an airborne on top of that, and a snare on top of that, and really long range poke on top of that. Great champion. Totally worth a ban because sometimes he just makes your team unseatable from a point. Uh, we're seeing Jarvan the Fourth banned as well. AoE airborne, has a slow, his damage is good. Nidalee. Excellent poke, gives sustain to the team. Best poke in the game, arguably. Sorry, did you talk about Leona ban already? I've never yes. seen a Leona ban before, and I've only seen her picked like once. She's really, really durable. A couple people are extremely good at playing as her, and it's so just. So, is it a target ban against? Uh, I don't think it would be a target ban against a person. I think it's more of a target ban against a comp. When you say, okay. you know, if they have Leona, it's gonna make this really suck. Because there's no particularly amazing Leona players that I know of. But people in the chat keep saying Sandra. I don't know who a Sandra is. What is a Sandra? I've never seen that name in competition before. Who name changed this time? I don't actually know. So seeing Cast and Master G banned as well. Master G. Well, you know what? Mash D, recent changes, I'm not going to lie. I'm not completely up to date with how he is in competition because there's just not a lot of media on him yet. He seems really, really solid. He seems like he can run away and clean up fights extremely well. And it doesn't seem like there's too much to stop him. As long as the player is, like, really aware of his stuff. Okay, Sandra is a Leona player. That's I, why I, Leona is banned. Yeah, I, I heard that, but okay. I... Where has Sandra played before? Should I know this name? Okay, so it's just a new player. I was right. Okay, that's my bad. I said I didn't recognize, so I didn't know if it was a name change or not. 
Thank you for confirming, not name change. So welcome, Sandra, to Dominate Dominion. Uh, apparently a high ELO solo queue Dominion player making their first ever appearance in the tournament. It's pretty cool. I love having new top level talent show up. Like when Taehyun started playing, oh man. When BB Pop started playing, awesome. I love seeing new top level competitors. Summer no, welcome to Total Mint. Wolfer, Total Mint's been around for a long time, man. Respect your elders, Wolfer, in the Twitch chat. Guys, if you guys want to watch live, twitch.tv slash dominate dominion, you want to see that Twitch chat that I am constantly referring to, you can see it right here on the screen. If you want to hang out with us, you want to talk live, you want to watch the show in person when it's all going on, then twitch.tv slash dominate gaming TV. Twitch.tv slash dominate gaming TV. It's different now. Yeah. Oh. That's new. And we're seeing Zyra and Kha'Zix band as well. Kha'Zix cast in the two best assassins of the game for this game mode. Extremely high mobility, they appear out of nowhere, they kill someone and they leave. Kassin brings a silence, Kha'Zix brings absurd damage. And Zyra, very high damage and amazing crowd control. And amazing zone control. That's why she gets banned. So look at the picks though! Peoples on Janna are more likely picking up Janna probably to trade to Supportal a little bit later on. Janna, fast, has an airborne, damage shield, just Jin's kit's great. One of the better support kits in this particular game mode because it's all kinds of delay that she brings to the table with it. The slow, the airborne, the knockback, the damage shield, the sustain from the ultimate as well. It's good. Over the other side, we're seeing Karma. Now, Karma's a, a support, quote unquote, that will actually do. Uh, she's like kind of in between a mage and a support, where she can bring a lot of damage to the table as well as being pretty durable and bring a lot of utility to her team as well. We were seeing Lee Sin. Lee Sin's a good brawler. He gives vision to uh, things on the map. He can highlight those targets. And he's just, overall, just a really good character. And Tay is playing Cassiopeia. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that Tay is playing Were you Cassiopeia. there for that, like, stutter step yeah, cast game? Yeah, I was. That was just I was. That was, unreal. like, the second tournament that I casted, and I was like, oh my god. That player is amazing. And then I didn't see him for several weeks. And I was like, no, I need to see that Cassiopeia again. Well, you missed a couple of tournaments that he was actually in, too. Oh, so no. it was just bad timing. Yeah, I, mi I missed like two of them because I had to cast some other stuff. But I'm really excited that I get to cast this again. So, guys, we are going to see some and, pretty interesting and stuff. Pop has been. Yes. Oh, my God. Absolutely game, right. The only way this could be better is if they had Lulu instead of Janna. But Janna is like almost as good. Oh my goodness, this team comp right now for Clueless is so good! How do they get all of these champions? I don't well, even Well, there's know. just not enough bands to ban out that team. Not there really even, isn't. Except like maybe if you had every single one of them. See, that's what I want to see. I want to see specifically these two teams play each other in the ban every champ game. Because... Wait, in the ban every champ game? It's part of Day of Dominion. There's going to be a day where Dominion stream for 24 hours but I'm going to set up a game. It's going to be 5 on 5, it's going to be cast, and the players are going to ban champs until there are only 10 left, and they I will see. draft out of the remaining 10. I see. You need that many bans to stop them. That's, that's pretty true. I don't think it's going to be a thrush, but if this is a thrush, I'm just going to lose it. Well, Sauron is really, really good at playing some of the worst characters. Because he actually puts a ton of games into each one of them to just, just to see, just to make sure. And it looks like he's going to lock in Mal's instead. But Sauron has put a ton of work into Trindamere and a ton of work into Atrox. Both considered extremely bad characters. But Sauron has played like 100 games piece on him easily. Just to see. Just to see if there was some way that they could be viable. But no. He's just, he's not feeling it. So we're going to, oh... I am what is, super, super What is this game? game? Okay, hold on. All right, I'm, 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 I'm kidding up the mic. Okay, here's what so we I have here. So I think Peoples is going to be playing Zach. Sauron's going to be playing either AD or AP Malzahar in the bot lane. Yeah, so I, I, well, you could... Yeah, it's going to be Mal's down there. It's going to be Sauron. Sauron knows how to do that. Yeah. You don't gonna see be him too yet. often on it, but I'm always confident in Sauron's ability with a champion. But then they have... Okay, so the thing is, you have all of this crowd control. You have the kiting from Cass as soon as she gets her 
her Rylai's. You have all of the kite from Janna. You have the condemn from Vayne. You have the less bounce on the last six slingshot and the stretching strike from Zach. And then we you set. GG. But anyway, then you have an Olaf against that. They're like, you know what? So Mike's playing Janna, so we're just gonna pick Olaf because what's the hardest counter to Janna in the game is pretty much Olaf. Like, I don't think there's a harder counter. Like, okay, so so also Ash. Olaf is also really good against Ash. But those two champions, Olaf is amazing. Oh. And I think overall he's not that strong a champion, but in this well, specific we competition, see, we saw Metal Fenrir play a lot of that particular champion. So that's all the experience you really have with it, unfortunately. Oh, it looks like we had a mispick. Olaf was an AFK random. G G. That's what I get for saying Olaf K Olaf is, is good against Janna. Hmm. Well. Oh, but Metal Fenrir, I really liked your Olaf. Metal Fenrir in the chat. Why must you remind me of my past? Man, but I've seen him like wreck some bottom lanes with Olaf before. Well, they're, I think Olaf's they're a good trying champion. to buff Olaf back. They don't want to like make him the same as he used to be, but they realize that they nerfed him to the ground and they yep. want to buff him a little bit. That's why we don't see him in competition too much anymore, because of that. But those were those were good times because you just the lightning struck. And bad things happened. And if you've ever if you've ever played, like, if you've ever played a really goofy Olaf with mana and CDR, and you just went undertow spam, like that was that was fun times. It was definitely not <laughs> definitely not normal or competitive, but man, that was fun. There's a lot of really interesting ways to build champions in this game that make them extremely fun to play, even if they're not necessarily the best way to build them. Like Trinity Force Sona, yeah. Yeah, I mean that Trinity Force is proccing all the time. I actually played support Poppy last night. I was I was doing like a a lesson support stream or something where I like where I was giving lessons and I told my stream chat, all right, I play any support you ask for, and I half expected them to pick something that they actually wanted to learn about. They're like support Poppy, so I played support Poppy. And it was amazing. I went Trinity Force for Trinity Force GA was my build. Yeah, uh Zemike actually does Triforce on Sona here in Dominion a lot. Oh no no no, Triforce Sona is legit. And it's, it's really good. Like with the new change to it too, I'm like, ooh, I don't even know. Yep, Kittily says in the chat, and it's totally true. Any sheen item is not bad on Sona. It's it's godlike. Other things that are really fun to play, but are not necessarily terribly competitive. Uh, if you've ever done attack damage Malphite because of Brutal Strikes, that's pretty nasty. So is uh, attack damage Nautilus, is another fun one that people do occasionally. If you do pure speed manipulation Lulu, it's so dumb. Um, what that is, is you just get a lot of items that slow, and you just chip people down with glitter lance you just kite forever like, that's just I just that's why I like this game you can do so much crazy stuff in it it's always like <laughs> it was gonna be Hecarim yeah not not an Olaf pick from Sauron but they will go for Malzahar and Zach there just waiting on Caravel's last pick here also I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the quirky I remember seeing I, I assume it was Chizanima also playing quirky or what are they now Num number one Wait, is that what? a permanent name change? Because I feel like they had a name change last week also. Well, they played under a different name in the LOL Pro Tourney, I know that much. But I don't remember last week, because I didn't. I wasn't here last week. Oh yeah, that's I was right. just doing birthday stuff. Which, I need to dig up the actual date for when the Texas thing is going on, because I do want to go and hang out in Texas with all you guys that are uh, Texas viewers and Texas Dominion community guys. Um, it looks like it's going to be in... Uh, in... I hear it's going to be in Fort Worth, and it's going to be at, uh, I can't remember the name of the venue now, but suppose, supposedly October 19th. I'm going to make sure I absolutely confirm that, and then I will start telling people that I'm going to be in town, because 
There's a lot of awesome Texans that play this game. Uh, the Mike's out there. Feedski's out there. Dory Vita V is out there. Uh, let's see, who else is out? I know there's like at least two more that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Active game was not found. Yup, got that error also. It'll happen three more times. Two more times. I think it happens three times total when it happens. Yeah, they're no playing idea four what shows over there. It, but it happens. Alright. So look at these two team comms. I see. Well, I just see everything ending with um, True Silver Bolt proc someone dies. That's what I, I see, see here. I see Tay on Cassiopeia, Baby Pop on Bane, and Zamike on Janna. Like, I see like, slow. Oh from Janna, you don't catch up to BB Pop. I see Airborne from Janna, BB Pop kills someone. I see zoning from Tay. Oh, I don't want to stand in that. Oh, Vayne's gonna kill me because Vayne's on the other side. Okay. I see Tay getting a Riley's Crystal Scepter and then kiting everyone while Baby Pop also kites everyone and everyone's just going to die. And it's going to be amazing! But seriously, there's actually a pretty good team comp for both teams. Karma has a ton of damage. Um, she has to man manage her mantras pretty much. Pretty, it's important that she manages her mantras. But if you're good at Karma and you know how to do that, then you can be really, really effective with her. Um, Corky is not going to scale as well as Vayne is into late game, but the new Triforce was actually a pretty huge buff for him. I assume that Corky still wants to go Triforce because Corky used to be literally the only AD carry that you would go Triforce on. And then you sometimes went Triforce on Ezreal also. And then Triforce got nerfed and then Corky wasn't viable. So the Triforce change might actually be enough to make Corky be viable again. Um, and then they have good crowd control from Hakram. Grog is going to be able to split people apart. If he can ult Baby Pop or Tay into the middle of the team, then it's going to be pretty hard for them to survive, even with the help of Zemike's Janna. So... Good, good team comms from both sides. I'm just really excited to to see the players on the specific champions on the side of Clueless. I look at the summer spells. Wait, is this gonna be an AP Quirky? Because last week I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be an AP Quirky, and then it was. Well, an AP MMKH quirky. does do some of that, and Golly does do some of that, but they also know that everyone expects AP Quirky, so sometimes just build AD because that would be the actual unexpected thing to do. I would, I would really like to see an AP Corky, but last week I said this could be an AP Corky, and then it was an AD Corky, and so this week I'm expecting an AD Corky, because that's what it was last week. I saw someone in the Twitch chat mentioning that it's hard to read the spring green uh, color. There's actually a mod for Twitch where you can make your Twitch background black. It makes oh, really? it hard to see the dark blue names, but yeah, you need the, um, need the browser add-on stylish, and then you just like look up Twitch TV dark and, like, pick the one that has Trifex's face by the picture, and there you go. But, yeah, it makes the background, um, like, dark black. Well, there's, there's like, three or four different ones, Wall Rusty, and it's, it's pretty cool, and that way it's not, I like, I assume if you light. search Twitch theme, that should be enough to get it in whatever... You have whatever to, browser. have include, you have to wor include the word dark or you have the word black in there, because there's a lot okay. of different ones uh -oh. that are not... They, there's more than just that. It's, there's a lot of modification when you get into those things. So, uh, we have a couple seconds left on the countdown. Guys, this is going to be the round of four game, and this is going to be a very, very good game to see. It's going to be Clueless versus Cheese Enema, and Clueless has BB Pop Vane, Mad Supportal on Janna, and Tay on Cassiopeia. On the other side, we are actually gonna, are going to see MMKH on Corky, so this is going to be very... I am percent hype. I hope everyone else is percent hype as well. Wait, why is she's in my clueless on the wrong sides now? Um, 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 what do I do? What do? What do? Uh, quick, do the intro! Welcome to the semifinals of Dominate Dominion numbers uh, 71. This is. I don't. I, I do it differently from you. We're gonna do it the different way. Just do this it the Ryan Gold River way. Oh, what do you say? Oh my God. Uh, the blue team is going to be clueless. Is Commander Peoples on Zach? Mad Supportal on Jana? Tay playing Cassiopeia. Baby Pop on Vayne and Sauron on Malzahar. I am Ryan Gold River. 
I am going to be one of your commentators for the night, and casting with me is... Gandair of the gaming clan, Vato clan, and on the other team, we have Cheese Enema, Sandra playing as Karma, Totalment playing as Lee Sin, Krog playing as Hecarim, M.M. Cage playing as Corky, and Corval playing as Gragas. I'm really excited for a lot of these picks. Also, we have an arcade Hecarim. I'm, I'm changing my music. I've been listening to a playlist of K-pop. I am changing it to Erasure. Or, sorry, Always. I'm changing it to Always by Erasure on loop. Just that one song, the entire game. I have to do this. Oh, dear. It is necessary. Alright. Okay, so... Reingold, what do you think of this windmill fight? Let's, 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 let's stop for six seconds. I'm gonna look at the left side, you look at the right side, let's look at champs. Three, two, one, do it. Alright, Kyra wants to be zoning with her Q, or, yeah, with her Q. She needs to be careful to not waste her mantra on too many early Qs, or she's not going to be able to have it for the AoE shield or the heal. And she should be able to get two mantras in the fight, so she's gonna want to use one mantra Q early on, probably, and then save the mantras for the rest. And then Hakram and Leeson are going to want to be, uh, oh wait, is it Hakram? No, it's gonna be Gragas Bottom. Hakram and uh, Lee Sin are going to want to be soaking up as much damage as possible while Corky is able to poke. Corky needs to be careful to not run out of mana. He has bottom mana potion, and he did pick up a Dorian's Ring as AP Corky. I'm so excited! He has 67 ability power already. This is going to be great! Thank you, Sik um, Sa uh, What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? This oh is a special! I meant, so. I don't think there's going to be a windmill fight at all, Gander. They're just going to simply go and gank bot lane. We're and going to learn how this build works together. Sauron may be completely dead. Cassiopeia responded to this by coming back down from the top. Gonna meet up with Zack. Looks like they're both gonna head down this direction. And they're gonna take the early cap at the bottom. And Sauron is level 3, and he's already lost his tower. Come on, get with the program, Sauron. What are you doing? Now, this is an opener that we don't see very often. It does happen occasionally. You ignore the windmill, you take the bottom, and then when they respond to the bottom, when they get when they send people down to get that, then you just sort of rotate up to top and then take the windmill. It bypasses the entire opening windmill fight entirely by forcing engagements in other areas of the map. So it looks like they're going for the drill now, and they're... The drill's gonna be lost. They're gonna trade for the refinery. Zack's over here. Point oh, no, not Sandra neutralized didn't yet. Quite captured for long enough. Sauron came just in time. They were not able to pick up the refinery, so it is a three cap right now for Clueless because they swapped over. Sauron got there just in time. Now the ignite comes out onto Sauron. Corval is low. Corval goes to go down. Sauron probably also gonna go down. No, the exhaustion card was enough. Sandra is being poked down a little bit. Bane and John were able to take down Corky at the top. Meanwhile, Krayog has to back off. Is he going to try and recapture? It's still very, very low. He could try and get here, but one tick of damage, basically, and he's going to be dead. He can't get it. Sauron's here. Doesn't take a tower shot. He's going to be able to pick up the relic. No, Sauron has moved Minions! Back. The minions are going to do bad things to Hecarim. He says around. He does. Oh, he pops the exhaust off. He throws no, that down. on top of the thing, but it's going to be okay, and he's going to... What? Why did you st No! No! They had to neutral the tower, and the minion would have walked over to it and died on its own! Hecarim, please! That goes in the blooper reel, three minutes into the game. So Taeyeon down on the bottom lane is going to take this part back, and they are going to secure this tower. They have secured the top as well, and Cheese Enema has decided that they are going to play standard now for people moving on up to the top. That almost, I don't understand. He would have had enough health to take a couple hits from the minion to get it finished being neutral, and then it would have walked up to the tower to start trying to cap it and died. But now, the windmill's getting turned around by Cheese Enema. B Pop and Commander Peoples up here on their own. 2v4 at the moment. Cassiopeia is still pretty far out. And Janna even further out. Cassiopeia catching up now. They want to start this fight before Janna gets there. They want to be able to get the mix up before Zemite can help out. There's a lead bounce from Peoples. It's not getting nasty anymore. Windmill has been completely captured by Cheese Enema. And Zemite trying to get a little bit of capture back. Throws out a tornado. Is 1v1 in the ball lane right now. It's going to be an AP Malzahar, not an AD Malzahar, and an AP Corky. Those rockets are going to hurt like all hell. Oh, and the, the, slow. the slow. The E, the shield from Karma is enough 
and Tay. No, she's going to be just fine on Cassiopeia. There's the double kill. Oh my god, didn't even care that he wasn't going to get the stun. He was fine with just the slow. Triple kill for Cassiopeia. The mic with the hero shield saving the life of the Cassiopeia. Corval, the only one on She's Animal who's still alive, going to be in the ball lane. And minions are just going to recap top. That slow used just to close the gap far enough so he could get in and throw down the damage. Didn't need the stun at all. He just knew that, hey, if I throw this, I can get close enough them to start this fight and clean this up. And he was able to do exactly that. In the bottom lane, Sauron is a little puppy. No, nope. the puppy disappears also when you recall. Teu is going to get the storm shield. That's scary. It's actually scary. just Tay. I asked him. It. He was originally Taeun, and sometimes I still call it that by accident. Commander People sticking his head out up front. He is revealed. They do have vision on him. Takes a lot of chip damage in the process. They want to connect with Tobelman's Lee Sin. Tae is chasing Sandra out of the fight. There's only going to be a one shot after another. The Storm Shield doing all that extra damage is going to take him down. Cassiopeia just soloing Karma into oblivion. Now, Hecarim has broken away while this is going on. BB Pop, it looks like he is going to break away to respond to that. Drill being captured as well, and Tay is just keeping people back away from the point. Anywhere but this Cassiopeia is the quest goes. going over to Clueless. It's she's on a mic. Yeah, they got a neutral off, but Clueless, not only are they going to be able to cap the drill, but they're getting the quest off that. So even if the points were completely swapped, that was still completely in Clueless's favor. Clueless is just doing an amazing job so far this game. That is definitely in part due to Cassiopeia, however. Krog is doing a job of keeping BB Pop from neutraling that, but every time he does in, he gets hit three, four times, and that's just not. Ball in Sandra good. does get the snare onto people's the exhaust on the Corval. He's gonna go down almost immediately. Hakram is trying to back cap the refinery. The, the lower left hand point. The quarry! That's the only one I don't remember. Krog being chased away now. Takes a silver bolt proc for a little bit of extra damage. Tay with the ult on to Totalman there. Totalman totally dead. Tay with the kill. I feel like I'm going to say that a lot. Actually, I don't think I'm going to say it. Well, I feel like I'm going to say it a lot, but I don't think he's going to play Cassiopeia a lot again after this game. Well, I mean, if you target ban Cassiopeia out, I mean, you, there's far worse things, unfortunately, which is really scary to say. Like, what gets worse than that? Silverbolt proc on MK does a little bit of damage. Sandra trying to keep Tay chained down, but has to back away. Crowd control coming in from Zemike in the back. Zemike, aka Mad Supportal, the man with two names. Corval being stalked away from the center of the map. And Tolman coming back in. Oh, misses with the Sonic Wave on BB Pops. Not able to follow that up. That was a great tornado from Jana there, stopping Hecarim before he could get the E off, the E auto attack off. Saron has no mana, he is probably just gonna go down. Yeah, there he goes down, I think he pressed S at the end. There's a Silver Bolt proc from Bang, gets that true damage off, gets the kill. Explosive cast from Gragas, but Kraya gonna go down, total mint now, off to the side. Silver Bolt proc, one more Silver Bolt proc, and we dead. Jana, healing! No, not quite enough, the Q in from Lisa, and he goes down, baby pop not quite tumble as much as he wanted to. No, the attack speed, the attack speed slow from that cripple is enough and a double kill for Lee Sin. But this entire time, Clueless has had a four cap. So even if Choose Enema gets a cap off of that team fight, which it looks like they are going to do in bot lane, that still only brings them up to a two cap. And Tay is here in top lane, gets hit by the Sonic Wave. The Mike is here, gets the W and the Q. A shield onto Tay. A little bit of damage from Corky, but Corky just melts immediately. They are two versus four right now. Gotta be a little bit careful, but it looks like they're gonna be fine. Malzahar moving down to the bottom, Gragas recalling. Someone's gonna get some free capture time in on this point. Won't be able to get neutral, unfortunately. But, he will be able to get a lot of capture in on it, which is gonna make it a little bit easier if he gets another chance in before it's able to regenerate. Storm Shield is gonna be secured for Team Clueless at the moment. Karma moving around the backfield, moving around behind Malzahar. Looks like she wants to go for that gank. Not sure if they're aware of it or not. Sauron should have some sort of suspicion. And he's going to be retreating away from that. Snare is going to land, and Sauron in a really, really bad spot between Sandra and Corval. Ekram coming down here as well. Four people down here in the bottom. Punish the Sauron. He is going to be defeated. Tolman going over straight for the tower. However, that's just a straight-up exchange. They're going to lose the drill on the process, and they might even lose the Boneyard. We will see. Zach's channel is the coolest thing ever, but Baby Pop chasing down Krayog is also pretty cool. Also, is also pretty cool. Also, is also pretty cool. There is Janna gets the tornado down. Sonic Wave not going to collide with anything. Karma, meanwhile, is trying to cap the refinery. Zach prepping the last slingshot doesn't quite hit it, but gets the stretching strike, so Karma does not manage to get the neutral off. Does have the tether. 
and no tenacity from Let's Bounce anymore. Stretching Strike lands. Lee Sin is here, does have Dragon's Rage up, but Janna is here. Vayne is coming around from the other side. Stretching Strike lands again. He has nothing to W or Q2. There's the knockup from the Howling Gale. Janna getting on the other side will be able to use ult if she wants to. Tolman is totally dead again. I'm just going to keep saying that because I think it's funny. I remember Tolman back when he played a whole lot of Suede. Seeing him on Lee Sin's a little bit weird for me. Sour on the bottom lane. The tower has recovered now uh, from the last push they tried to make against it. And you see Sauron going for more of an AP Miles this game as opposed to an AD uh, Miles we saw from Nerdock earlier on in the tournament crowd capturing this top point. Cassiopeia They're is going to have something to say about letting that. letting him. Oh, just kidding. Well, anyway, the rest of the team was just letting him, so they made the call. You know what? Tay's got it. Baby pops and It actually takes a lot of damage, but going to be able to tumble to the other side. Should be able to get the them up. Double kill for Vayne. Oh, Vayne the shield! Their good shield from Supportal. That shield going to keep him alive from any of that minion damage that would have occurred. Exhaust on Total Mint. Oh dear, Zach should be able to come get up from this pretty easily with his team there to zone people away from him. And we're going to see him come back. Ta-da, peoples, once again. And Tay, hiding forward a little bit, does get the kill. There's the AP Corky. Baby oh dear! Pops. Tried to flash to the side, but it was still too much damage anyway. And Hecarim with that kill. Karma is in the top. Managed to take the refinery for a team right now. And they might actually be able to get to a 3 cap. Or at least a neutral 2-2. Uh, neutral so Portal is here. Hecarim coming. Krayog on that champion. Sandra does land the W, but I don't think it's going to finish. It does actually finish. So Portal gets exhausted, but has ult available. So ult for exhaust is a trade there. And this might actually turn into a 4 cap all of a sudden for Chizenema. Yeah, she's gonna be doing a good job of turning this around. That that uh, that backfield play against the refinery, able to pick that pe that bat point up, really helped them out a lot. Especially with Vayne dying in that engagement over at the drill. MKH though is going to be banished uh, back by Tay. And Sandra is a little bit caught in between too many people, and I don't think she can survive unless she can run over to the side. Maybe she will be able to. Oh, that's right. Her skills are all overpowered as crab. And the stun on Hecarim. Tay's gonna be able to put a lot of damage in on it. People's going in for Sandra there. See him dashing right on through and is going to be able to take her down. No! She's just barely. Never mind. As he had his cooldowns up. come up. Tay right. takes a ton of damage from the AP Corky first. AP Corky has a ton of damage. Oh my god, careful, Tay, careful, careful. You're gonna go down anyway. Corky needs some. He doesn't have boots, so he can't wear snakeskin boots because he's flying a plane. And flying a plane boots be really... Oh dear! Jump, jump! Dominion makes you want to. Sandra comes around from the back, lands the stun. MMKH able to put in a little bit of hurt on no people as on well, him. but he able to pick up that health on the way. And now Sandra treating back. Is still alive, gets the shield. And Tay now caught in the middle of a lot and a lot of people. And gonna get snared, but Zemike is here on Janna, will have a shield in just a second, gets the kill on Corky, can he get the kill on Sandra also? Zemike channeling the tower actually, and Cassiopeia is going to get punished there. Finn and Zack on their way back up. Zack, they just, they just use it, yeah, he just uses revive. So he'll be here in just a sec, Baby Pop is here. Also, they want to be able to get the windmill back, get their three cap back. 79 Nexus Hulls only right now for Cheese Enemy compared to 312 on the side of Coolis. There's a knockup actually onto Krayog from Janna, and he's probably going to go down. Yes, he does. This is going to be the windmill going back to Clueless. In the bottom lane, though, they may potentially lose that point. Tay is on his way down, and Sauron does have to call the Void available, but he does use that on Gragas. I felt like it would have been a lot safer for him to play that on Lee Sin instead. Well, it looks like they have Lee Sin completely under control. That Hex Drinker will not save you from the dogs. The spooky puppy is hungry. There's the tumble from Vayne. MMKH taken pretty low. One more auto attack, and he's not actually going to go down to that true damage, but he is going to go down to that damage. But Krayak does get the kill on you. Baby Pop in exchange. People's trying to sustain from his passive just a little bit. Doing a pretty good job of it, actually. Yeah, he's actually... This, what is this? <laughs> Zach! You know what? going down at all. Kraya gets the health relic. People's now, I don't think you can fight Lee Sin also. It dodges the Q, but uh, Hagram was just a little bit too much damage. That delay was amazing by People's Zack. Yeah. Point neutral on the far side of the map. Clueless has three. They're not that worried about it, I think. But, oh, Hecarim doing the smart thing. You only need one to capture. Break that second person off. Send them somewhere else on the map. That's the play they needed to make. 
Uh, and Lee Sin gonna be able to get the refinery and the quarry is being captured by Craig right now. This back capping might be able to work for them, except they're actually just trading points right now because Bane and Jana took And that early off. break, that's the important thing to know. BB Pop broke that channel on the drill early because he knew the minions would finish it up. So he was able to get that little bit of extra time, that little bit of extra travel time started going for him to get across the map. And Tage doesn't have any mana right now. Wants to finish yeah. off Hecarim. It's not hard. quite able to do it. It throws away on my Miasma, the too. The really hard with no mana. Yeah, he wasn't going to catch up if that Miasma didn't land. Baby oh, final, final hour, hour activated. Sandra knocked back. Stun does not happen, unfortunately. And even with the Malefic Vision, Sandra's still able to get away. Nope. Cassiopeia be picking anyway. it up. And that's going to be game over. Clueless is going to advance on to the next round, and, uh... That's the finals. Next round's gonna be the finals. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait. Pays up on Child Sport. Not able to be here this week. Clueless has taken out Cheese Enema. Who's left? Uh, Safonda. That's all. Oh, dear. Yeah. This is gonna be exciting. Safonda so may be able to take their first ever finals victory. They do have to go through a very powerful looking clueless to do it, unfortunately. So it's gonna be an uphill battle, but so Fonda in the finals! That's gonna be awesome. Okay. Now let's take a look at that post-game lobby screen. Make sure you guys get a chance to see the builds and such. Here they are for you, for your viewing pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure? Why did I put a Z in that? That's not how that word works. Let's take a look at the graphs, because that's what people really like to see. Damage Delta Champions, so this is Tay out in front with 30k. Sauron behind with 26. And, uh, well... Gragas, not quite a five-digit number, unfortunately. Not having such a great game down there in that bottom lane this time. And let's take a look at... Time Spent Dead, Graveyard Hero this game... Oh dear. Corky. Okay, and I'm going to throw over to a commercial we get the finals game set up. Guys, we're going into finals. The finals is going to be a best of three. It is going to be Clueless versus... We, do, we don't actually know yet. Man, I was trying to like lead off like because I was going to cut It'll the VOD. It'll be Clueless against the winners of Team Murka Murka versus My Bear Tippers. <laughs> 